Okay, so today we're looking at a steel string guitar. I don't build a whole lot of these. But one of the first guitars I had when I was a kid um, was a Martin Double O. And I've kind of been partial to that size ever since. Now, there's a couple things about the Double O size that are interesting that need to be taken into account. First of all, it's a long body. It's, it's considerably longer than it is wider um, as opposed to say a dreadnought which is several inches wider and also several inches wider at the waist. So what that means is that it's constricted. It's constricted into a, an oval pattern as opposed to a rounder pattern like you would see in a dreadnought. Um, the waist is, is fairly tight and the sound hole probably should be a little smaller than it actually is. Um, just in my personal opinion if you want to get a deeper sound out of the instrument you want a lower air resonance which pulls the top resonance down. Now this is Engelmann spruce, which is a little softer, well a fair amount softer actually than, than Sitka spruce. And in this case I've just gone with my regular rosette because I wanted that sound hole size. And also I find that it's easier to get a nice clean inlay with this kind of, of rosette than just the single stripes that go around. Um, I don't like using a fly cutter and well, that's the cleanest way to do it. So at any rate what we're looking at is the bracing pattern. Now the bracing pattern normally is you know it's the standard Martin kind of brace but I want a really responsive instrument. I like the the, the uh, X concept, but I'm going to be doing it according to what I see on the layout here. I honestly don't know what the what the angle is going to be. It's uh, it's a mystery until I do it. Now, what I'm going by, I've marked the location of the bridge roughly. This is going to be within an eighth of an inch either way. I'm down about an eighth of an inch here from the 14th fret. Now normally, you know, you'd have the 14th fret right over the, the binding uh, around here so that it kind of continues the line of the binding. And that ends up with this particular scale length, which is 632 millimeters puts the bridge right in this location. Now, depending on the, the scale length you use, it would move forward or back a little bit. Normally a classical guitar bridge is pretty much centered in the lower bout. That's not the case with this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to figure there's there's certain placements of the braces according to the pinholes here. We don't want to be drilling a hole into our brace and the sound hole. We can't have the brace too far away from the sound hole or too close. So I'm going Roughly roughly there. And I'm just eyeballing this. It's uh, not a precise science right now. So that's roughly where I'm looking at 
at this going. At, at the moment, this is further away than this. I, I can fix that. Um, not a big deal. I want the joint here to be as close to perfect on the center line, which is right here, as I possibly can. And at this point, I'm looking at a brace thickness that I'm, I'm thinking is going to be just a, a bit over a quarter of an inch. And I'll be making up any strength deficits with the height. I'm actually going to build this pretty uh, pretty tight. Okay, now one thing that that we don't have necessarily as an issue on a steel string guitar, an X braced guitar. There's always a brace across here. And that's an interesting concept. Now the other thing is usually the brace braces punch in along the sides up here. And I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to run this brace right up there. Now at this point, you know, the brace as it goes in here is actually going to be tapered down to pretty much nothing. Right? It's, it's going to go down to nothing. This brace is going to be pretty, pretty strong. Um, I, I am having an insert here from the, uh, the support underneath the fretboard. Okay, so of course coming from a more classical background, I kind of like the idea of running braces lengthwise as opposed to crosswise. And so we're having this angle here a fair amount less than 90 degrees. In fact, here's 90 degrees, and you should be able to see how it caters in like this. Um, and there's quite a bit more than 90 degrees there, obviously. So we're, we're spreading this, we're, we're kind of leaving this area open here. Now we're, we're going to end up having you know, so a brace or two going here. In fact, I'll probably just do one brace coming off here. And what I want is some support under the bridge and really going all the way under the, uh, the end of the bridge there like that and also like this. Now it's a little weird because right now I'm really just totally flying off the seat of my pants and I have no idea how this is going to affect anything. But I'm going to want this to pretty much cover that forward extension and that's going to be spreading the torque of the bridge and, and the downward pressure of the bridge across more of the top. Now in the back there's a lift going on as this attempts to rotate that way. This is going to be pushing down, this is going to be pulling up. And here, here's the the actual string, um, you know, the location of the, the bridge saddle. So we have a couple choices how to do this. I really don't mind the idea of 
doing a you know the standard Martin kind of style right brace here. And in fact, I would probably put one of them right here. And I don't even know if I would put another one. So concept here is to be rather minimal in terms of the braces and also with the exception of, of this top brace I doubt that I will even bring any of these all the way out to the line. In fact I will probably end these in, in this area here. So, so we can look here, and again, somewhere close to a quarter inch, six millimeters in, in the width from this. So that may be all there is. The, the question is whether there's any need or reason to stiffen any more here. And we've got this, this opening here. What we're going to be looking at for, for a cladney pattern is something that goes around here, intercepts the sound hole right in this area, and just goes all the way around. So that's, that's the intent. We will go ahead and and put some some sound hole bracing here. Same thing about here. I mean, this is all pretty standard stuff, and it's it's not so much. You know, years ago, they told me that you know the concept was to avoid flutter, some sort of acoustic flutter of the sound hole. Well, that's kind of ridiculous when you look at how the cladney patterns work. If we had a transverse bar across here, and it was big and beefy and was going to stop stuff, we'd, we'd keep the, the main monopole of, of the top down in the lower bout. But X braces don't do that. X braces allow it to come up. And if, if they're properly shaped, it allows some vibration here right into the sound hole. And most steel string guitars that are expressed will do that. So that's kind of a bogus concept. So I'm going to cut some bracing and we'll lay this out and see what it looks like.